There is a new kind of tension in Canada's airwaves tonight, and it's not because of the cold weather in the north or the storms that are forming in the Atlantic. Decisions that will affect national defense for the next 50 years are being decided in boardrooms, briefing rooms, hangars, and quiet military runways. This information comes from inside the nation. The name Gripen is spreading in ways that were not predicted. Engineers whisper it. Pilots learn about it. Politicians talk about it in private. And now, a powerful new part has been added to the mix. The name Rolls-Royce. The name has a lot of history, power, and accuracy behind it. The story of procurement isn't a simple one. There has been a change in the force of gravity here. This means that the speed has changed. When Canada looks up at the sky, it means it wants power, choice, and a future that it can make with partners it trusts. The Gripen is no longer just a plane on a proposal sheet. It is getting more and more fashionable as a symbol of being able to take care of yourself, being flexible, and being smart. If a British-built engine were put in a Swedish fighter plane and used to patrol Canadian airspace, it would send a strong message to the rest of the globe. It goes really fast. The feeling is electric. I have a feeling that something important is going to happen. A long time ago, the F-35 seemed like a good choice. A stealth frame that looks good and was made by American business, with the help of a large network of partners. There were plans for 88 of them to go to Canada. That plan didn't make any sense on paper. It had stealth, sensor fusion, and close collaboration with our colleagues in the US and NATO, among other things. But time has passed. Costs keep rising. The program's delays kept adding up. The amount of maintenance was more than what was promised. Each subsequent report made it evident that the lifetime price was going up steadily, with millions of dollars adding up on top of millions of dollars. The idea of simple ownership became less common. It now became clear how true dependency was. Washington was the center of the flow of software control, upgrade permissions, replacement parts, and political approval chains. Every change, every enhancement, and every deployment path traveled via gates that were controlled by other countries. Canada began to see the weight of the strain. It is not just the money that is a problem. It is the burden of sovereignty. The idea that being in charge of the sky also means being in charge of the choices that are made. At the same time, the Gripen E sped up even further. Saab, the Swedish defense company that made it, didn't sell shiny goods, they sold logic. They acted based on what was really going on. Runways that aren't very long, a hard place to be. It's cold outside. We need quick turnaround times. Not a very big ground crew. A lot of experience with digital technology. Very quick answer. The Gripen was made for countries who need to respond from faraway bases, highways, or other places. The infrastructure doesn't have to be perfect. It can. It is still there. It hits and then flies up again. It looks like the notion was made just for Canada with its huge, snowy, and stretched out land. In the north, dependability is quite important for business. They need to last a long time. They need a machine that keeps working even when everything else freezes or breaks. The Gripen was made for that kind of environment. Then there is the problem with the engine, which is the most crucial portion of the plane and the hidden key to controlling the planet. The modern Gripen has an engine made in the United States, hence it is directly affected by US export rules and bans. That one part alone has a lot of political weight. In some cases, the jet can't take off without the United States' permission. Permissions get stricter when relationships are tense. This is how modern control works. This isn't done with loud pronouncements, it's done with quiet parts. This is the moment when Rolls-Royce radically transforms the way things are done. A British engine choice changes everything. Because of this, the American shadow is no longer in the plane's interior. This gives the Gripen a new passport. It becomes a platform that is truly European and free from the technological chains of Washington. This means that Canada will really be able to choose what it wants to accomplish and have real control over how it does things. It is not a secret door. Without a quiet leash, 
a skill that allies support while keeping Canada's independence in mind. At this point, the story goes beyond just one airliner. Now, it's about a country changing how it sees its place in the world. For a long time, Canada has been able to keep a balance between its close ties to the US and its desire to stay independent. In the last two years, trade wars have shown everyone how easily friendship can turn into pressure. The tariffs on steel and aluminium are quite bad. Political hyperbole hurt people's trust. This changed how people thought about politics and how they felt about it. Defense was no longer just the job of the military. It was a choice based on money. It was on a large scale. The Gripen also gave something that the F-35 could never fully do. Making things in the area? Jobs in the area. It is control from the area. Saab's idea was more than just selling jets. A chance to work together was given. Canada uses assembly lines, a joint endeavor with enterprises in Canada. There are thousands of new employment being made, the growth of skills, sharing of knowledge. The idea that Canadians would build the machines that protect Canadian skies struck a chord that can't be measured by numbers. During the meeting, people talked about the chance that Bombardier may become an industrial partner. It has great engineering DNA, but it also has scars from hard times in the past. There is a real threat. Also, the possibility is quite genuine. If managed well, production in the defense industry may provide new life to the field, restore respect, and train a new generation of specialists. At first, the agreement for the Grapen was just for a fighter program, but it grew into a national industrial goal. Not only does it fly, but it also builds things on the ground. There was another event going on all around the world. Over time, the Gripen began to be seen in an increasing number of fleets. Brazil made up its mind. It was explored by several air forces as a new system to replace previous ones. It stood out because it was cheap. The cost of running it each hour is far lower than that of the F-35. Simpler maintenance is necessary. Missions demand fewer resources. That's what matters in the real world. There are no unlimited budgets. Countries are changing how they think about power. It doesn't have to be the most expensive choice. It can change the most. The best for the environment. This is the easiest to use. The Gripen's progress isn't just about technology. In terms of politics, it stands for a world that is slowly moving away from a single source of power and towards a world with many centers of power. Right now, Canada has to make a complicated and multi-layered choice. The F-35 still has stealth and better penetrating abilities even now. It makes it possible for American systems to work together. You can't ignore these things in any way. The Gripen, on the other hand, has a lot of benefits, such as being independent, affordable, agile, and good for business. A fleet with a lot of different types of ships starts to look more advanced. F-35s can do both stealth missions and missions alongside other planes. Gripens for patrols of maritime sovereignty, quick response, defense in the Arctic, and being ready for anything. The hybrid strategy gives you a sense of balance. The risk is lower. It spreads reliance. This makes national control stronger without hurting partnerships. This is a practical method to accomplish things in a world where there are no easy answers. This is also the time at which the story starts to get really intense, right in the middle of all this action. If you think this research is useful and this kind of in-depth, no-nonsense analysis is making you think about defense and geopolitics in a new way, then take a moment right now to show your support for the channel. Give it a like. Talk to someone who is really interested in aviation or international policy about this. This makes it easier for more people to understand what is really going on behind the headlines and the metal, metal skin of a fighter plane. The possible involvement of Rolls-Royce is more than just a technological enhancement. The message is a political statement made of metal and fire. The UK is rebranding itself as a significant defense partner in the world that will exist after Brexit. Sweden is becoming more and more important when it comes to NATO-aligned security structures. Canada's first objective is to get back control of its own safety. Even Washington can see the shift. It wasn't anger, but surprise. 
The idea that a loyal partner could move some of its defense architecture away from direct U.S. oversight sends a strong but subtle message. It is not a refusal at all. This is how evolution works. This is not a buddy who is getting weaker. This is a friend who is getting stronger. Engineers think about topics like the thrust curves, how well the engine can handle heat, how much gasoline it uses, and how often it needs to be serviced. The generals look at the survival rate, the preparedness percentage, and the sortie rate. Politicians think about a lot of things, such as how acceptable it is to the public, how it will help the economy, and how it fits with foreign policy. Now all of those numbers are starting to match up in a new way. A Gripen that has a UK engine, Canadian industry support, is built to last in severe conditions and is priced at a level that is sustainable becomes more than competitive in the market. This makes it really compelling. Each flight is a message of its own. Every takeoff sends a message of its own. Every time a plane lands on an icy strip, it proves that the correct machine, when used by the right people, can change an entire doctrine. Canada deserves respect because of where it is located. Always a tundra, a long stretch of beach, a tiny group of people, no easy roads. Air power is not a luxury here. It stands for both the threat of connection and the shield of protection. The airplane that is chosen today will still be flying long after today's leaders are gone. It will be put to use if new threats arise and new partnerships are created. That long-term vision is what drives this conversation so passionately. There is no hype story regarding the Gripen. In particular, it provides a case study in how to fit technology to terrain and machinery to tasks. Everything about it, from its sensors to its data links, to its ability to take in new software and its quick maintenance cycle, fits well with how things are in Canada. There is no attempt to strike the F-35 here. It is still one of the most advanced fighters ever built in terms of technology. That is a lot of power. Even so, power is not just technology. Smart alignment is what it is. It's not about showing off to a crowd. It's about finding what works for you. The Canadian people are paying attention to this. This is something that investors are paying attention to. Today, other countries are paying heed. This is just a moment of signaling. A developed country that is publicly rethinking a major American defense commitment in favor of a solution that is more flexible, independent, and backed by European networks. That doesn't happen very often. What a bold thing to do. The Gripen does not promise that it will be perfect. No machine can do it. It makes sure that things are done quickly. It guarantees a quick answer. There is a promise of independence. Being sovereign in today's society doesn't mean being alone. It is about interdependence that is managed well. Choosing friends instead than bosses. Instead of giving up freedom, people are encouraged to share their strength. A Rolls-Royce-powered Gripen is the best example of that. A heart that is from Britain. A Swedish body. A task from Canada. Three flags are woven together to make a shadow against the sky in the Arctic. Simulations, flight testing, and risk evaluations are still being done behind the scenes. Committees look at every part of it. But one thing is clear, the discourse has changed for good. Canada is no longer just following a course. At the moment, it is working on making one. This is what it means to have real defense independence. On the other hand, it starts a long time before the first jet ever left the ground. To confidently work towards a better future, you need to be brave enough to rethink, compare, and picture a different tomorrow. This story's events are still happening. People are going to make choices. People are going to sign or change contracts soon. There may be more factories in the future. New pilots will get training. There will be new doctrines written. Because of this, the result will be in the air above Canada. People will claim that the turning point was when the talk about the Gripen got louder, sharper, and more important. And when Rolls-Royce moved in and changed the balance of power behind the scenes. Keep reading this story. Stay aware of the real changes that are coming to the realm of national power, aircraft, and defense. Now is the time to acquire more breakdowns that are just as detailed, short, and easy to understand as this one. Thanks for the video. Join the channel's channel. 
make notifications work. Join the group of those who see it coming before it fully disappears from view.